Okay, everyone, welcome. Thank you for coming to this talk about in kernel analytics and tracing for eBPF, with eBPF for OpenStack Clouds. Specifically, I'm going to be talking about how to use the tracing capabilities of eBPF along with some machine learning techniques to uh, secure microservices. Um, so, my name is Brennan Blanco, I'm an employee at PlumGrid. Um, most of the, the work was done by Ali Kayam. Also, Plumgrid, he's not able to make it, but uh, I'll be presenting on be behalf of the work that he's done. So that's why his name's up on the slide. Uh, and um, we're both doing this work on behalf of the iAvisor project, the t shirt here. Uh, and the iAvisor project is a, a Linux Foundation collaborative project composed of uh, the companies with those logos. Uh, and. Um, iAvisor Project, just to give a little bit of background before I jump into the material, iAvisor Project is a community and a, a set of tools that people in that community use for doing uh, high-performance I.O. applications, from uh, providing networking functionality to doing tracing, security, um, all types of uh, new... Uh, infrastructure applications uh, using these tools um, with a mind towards security uh, and performance and I.O. Now, so the, the premise of this talk, we want to look at microservices, uh, and when we think at mi of microservices um, in terms of uh, security, uh, you think of the life cycle of the, those services. They come and go very quickly. Um, and they have some interesting characteristics uh, that, um, that are unique to, to these services um, that kind of change the way that, uh, that we have to think about security. For instance, uh, services run on a shared kernel might be co-located with other tenants or users. Um, so a shared kernel means it's lightweight, but it also means there is a larger attack surface, potentially, um, if you don't think about it properly. And it's nice that now developers are turning into their own, um, their own sysadmins. Um, it speeds up the life cycle. Uh, so that self-service is great. Um, but does that mean they also have to be a security expert? We'll see. Uh, the shared uh, infrastructure now that all of these services are running on are, um, I mean, we're making you know, great use of the physical resources. Um, but do we have to be worried about, uh, you know, users from part of, as part of the same organization compromising one another, intentionally or otherwise. And um, as we go through this fast development cycle, is the, um, are we compromising some of the, um, the assumptions that we were making when we were working in VMs or in the cloud where we could assume nothing about the VM and, and treat it as you know, a source of you know, potential danger and be able to isolate it very easily. Now, what, now who do we trust? And if we want to secure these microservices, um, where, where should we put that security? Now, the answer is uh, you have to defend in, you know, all layers. Everyone should be thinking about security. Um, no one is free from responsibility, uh, including the developer. But as OpenStack infrastructure operators, um, we have a responsibility at least to think about our piece. So let's, uh, in this talk, we'll look at how to provide uh, security for microservices as an operator. So we'll focus on the right-hand side here, the infrastructure operator. What's in, uh, you know, if we think of maybe the security as a service concept, um, that the infrastructure operator is, uh, might provide. Uh, what should be the characteristics of that? Um, the, I mean, first thing, it should be transparent. You don't want to uh, reduce the capabilities of the microservice that's running. It shouldn't impact the performance um, or any of the functionality that the, these developers are expecting to get from their, um, from their platform. Um, so it needs to be kind of invisible. And it needs to be generic. You don't know what microservices are running. You want a platform that adapts to all types of use cases without having to, um, you know, special case everything. So the the way in which you provide security as a service 
uh, should be something that's, that's flexible uh, and, um, and, and generic. And again, um, I'll reemphasize it needs to be efficient. Um, besides the transparency of functionality, it also needs to be um, as close to zero overhead as possible. Uh, otherwise, someone's going to go to a different platform that's more efficient, even if they're willing to give up security. Um, security is, is something that is, uh, should, shouldn't ha you shouldn't have to compromise on, on any of these things. Um, so now, as an a, uh, as a infrastructure operator, uh, what are the things you can uh, know about those microservices uh, while it's still treating them generically, while looking at the, the black box of that service that's running um, and, uh, and still being able to learn something about it uh, and do something a, a, about, the act, about when it's performing insecurely, uh, what, can you, what can you look at? You can look at the API calls, so if there's a REST API or um, an RPC API, you can uh, inspect those, but most likely they're going to be encrypted, so you, you have to maybe uh, put some uh, rough uh, guidelines on uh, what you can look at. So the, the contents, or maybe worst case, the length of the, the requests and responses. Um, generically, you can look at traffic uh, on, on the whole. Well, packets in, packets out. Everything is networked these days. Uh, everything is usually, you know, will probably have a disk uh, associated with it, so you should be able to look at disk I.O. as one of the, the metrics uh, feeding into your, your profile. Uh, and the tenants that are actually there. You should um, think of that as you know, the, the, the IDs of the, the services that are running um, have meaning. So who is running this service uh, is, is important. So in Linux, those will correspond to uh, namespaces or process ID names or um, C groups that you can, uh, with some, a little bit of legwork, tie back to the service that's, that's running. Um, and again, you want to be able to gather these metrics transparently and efficiently. So to do those things, um, we have been working on this experiment to see if we can use iAvisor to um, extract some of those metrics and um, see what we can build. So the, the thing that we'll be showing here is not a product. Um, it's not a, you know, a, a finished thing by, by any measure. It's an open source project, and we're just looking to see what the building blocks pr can provide. Um, so with that, we have the, the set of tools that's, um, that's already there in Linux, um, and it has the ability to capture, uh, capture API calls, capture uh, network I.O., um, capture uh, system calls, um, perform some analysis from them, and to do so uh, very lightweight. So We'll use those tools to build this um, kind of a, a feedback cycle between the applications that are running, um, whatever they may be, and the infrastructure operator um, to be able to uh, look at those, those black boxes and to learn something about them and potentially act. Now, if you're treating the, the, the services that are running as a black box, um, you don't really know anything about them. So as an operator, how can you figure what's good and what's bad about those services? You know, what's um, a particular profile for one service um, in terms of you know, network and disk accesses may be normal for one service, but if you apply that profile to a different service, it, um, it will look abnormal even though it's, they're, they're unrelated services. So you have to kind of decouple and, and um, put a blindfold over yourself um, to, uh, to make this judgment about what's good and what's bad and rely on, uh, instead, machine learning to um, take these metrics, which we'll be gathering and, and feeding into a machine learning al algorithm, and uh, seeing if we can get a, a high accuracy in terms of uh, detecting threats um, and also not uh, polluting ourselves with noise. So we have this uh, workflow of uh, monitoring the microservices um, both in terms of uh, API and traffic, along with disk and memory accesses, feeding them into a collector, and then taking the output of that 
and feeding it through machine learning and seeing if we can detect threats. That's the, that's the experiment. So changing gears a little bit, the tools in IOVisor let us, um, in a very lightweight way, um, start to monitor the, uh, the attack surface of Linux and, um, and to um, gather those metrics um, in a very customizable way. So here we're just showing a few code snippets of um, how you can kind of script some of this. Um, and the, these tools will, will show at the end. We have uh, GitHub and so on. You can um, see the, the full example. This was, um, will show that you can uh, attach some of these functions that we'll, we'll write to different uh, Linux internals uh, to collect things, for instance, as the VFS. So VFS in Linux is a virtual file system. It's kind of the abstraction layer to all of the, the uh, block devices or network devices that do block access. So it might be interesting to gather the metrics related to block rights using the VFS API. Uh, similarly, you can uh, collect the, the packet and byte count from different interfaces and uh, take those and, let's say, feed them into a histogram. So you might be able to take some metrics and um, do some analysis on those uh, from, from the script or from within the, the kernel uh, itself. Um, so things like uh, at the end here, you can do calculations such as latency, latency of virtual file system calls. So um, that's not something that's generally reported by, like, top or... Um, or IOTOP or, or some of the, the kernel APIs um, on a per function basis. So how do you, so it would be useful to be able to capture those and tie them to the particular microservice to be able to start to build these metrics. Um, here's another snippet. So this is going down like another level. So the tools that we provide let you um, uh, really get into some of the details of uh, uh, how Linux is, um, is, is running, how like the traffic, for instance, is flowing through the kernel, you can write a very customizable parser. Um, and that's something that we've been doing to add into the iAvisor tool set. You won't necessarily have to do, um, but I'm just putting this here to show the power of uh, the, the tool chain and the types of things that you can collect. So we have two examples that we'll show. And the first of these is... Uh, to look at uh, OpenStack as a microservice itself. OpenStack these days is deployed as a series of containers. Um, you have a, a Glance container, you have a Keystone container, and so on. Um, so we, we did one experiment to see if we could learn something about OpenStack. Uh, even though you could you know, in, inspect it through you know, just reading the Python code and adding, adding your own logic, um, let's treat that as a black box and see what we can learn. It was a tool that, that we already knew, so it was a, a good starting place. And so what we did, we um, used the iAvisor tools to build the security profile. We let, um, iVisor, or we let OpenStack run normally, collecting the metrics um, for, um, for VFS reason rights and um, the length of API calls that are going into the different services. And we took these... Um, these profiles based on what the service w in question was. So you had a different set of profile for Glance, a different set of profile for Keystone, and so on. Uh, and um, we're going to focus on Keystone. So we took those profiles for all of the OpenStack services, and then we uh, took, uh, we you know, just created a, a simple password attack uh, scenario that would, uh, you know, start to just try to guess passwords uh, to log into Keystone at kind of a, a low, um, uh, kind of a low threshold, not, you know, completely uh, overloading Keystone, but, uh, you know, doing something that's a little bit out of the normal. And we kept that up for a little while. And um, so we took, taking those, you feed the, the outputs of the good profile and um, create a, a um, you, what we did was create a, a rock curve um, that will tune to um, re uh, minimize the, um, the, the false positive and the, um, in, in, uh, increase the, the true negative. Or, yeah. 
And the, the results for that were pretty good. So it was a pretty simple test, and we got a 97% dete detection rate um, based on that machine learning algorithm. So that was, uh, I think, a successful test. Um, and we tried one other um, example, which was a, a database container running uh, within Docker, uh, running uh, MySQL. And uh, what we did was we took, um, uh, we played um, a, a series of SQL queries, um, the, the good profile, and um, monitored all of the, um, the, the packets on the network, their size and um, length, and uh, also the VFS, again, the VFS um, reads and writes uh, to, to see how you know, particular types of queries might relate to uh, particular reads from the disk or writes to the disk. And if you end up seeing um, you know, some query that you expect to produce a low number of reads and it produces a high number of reads, that's something that uh, is potentially outside of your curve with some probability. And uh, these are all done within the kernel. So we keep these statistics and, um, and uh, aggregate them over time. And then we injected uh, or ran a query to do uh, an SQL. So we had some queries that were SQL injection attacks, which extracted large segments of the database uh, to, you know, back to the, the malicious user. So it was trying to collect all the information inside the database. And um, that, that was while the benign traffic was running. And we were able to um, detect those as well. A um, little bit more uh, false positive, so this was um, not quite as accurate, so there's still a little bit of noise there, so there's some, some work to be done. Um, and there's also a dashboard that, that came along with this, so we you know, fed the, these, the, this time series database of, um, of uh, analytics that we're, we're uh, capturing from the kernel, and, and you can see here the four spikes at the bottom are the algorithm detecting the, uh, the attacks. So this is when it went into that, um, you know, crossed that, that threshold of saying that, you know, this particular uh, correlation of, of uh, network traffic and disk accesses is abnormal. So at this point, we have, so we can see um, how this works. Um, so here we have two shells. And on the left, we have our Docker container. And we'll start that up, and we'll start a, a monitor on the VF, uh, interface for that, that container. And every five seconds, that's the, the five parameter there. Um, here's the name of the interface. Uh, we're going to be uh, collecting those stats. And as well, in the background, the, um, the VFS calls are also being monitored. And here we're just showing the log of those, those data points being collected. Uh, now, I don't have uh, side by side with this the, the CPU utilization or the overhead of these monitorings. Um, we're starting the, the queries in the background. Um, so we don't have the, the CPU utilization of that, but the, the overhead is uh, in the like 0.01% like uh, overhead for uh, the monitoring that's being done. And um, as compared to some other uh, in-kernel uh, analytics tools like Perf or, um, uh, 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 escape me, but um, the overhead is, is very small and you can um, just do the summarization of the statistics of, let's say, reads per second, bytes per second, um, and so on. And just only on demand from user space will you extract those um, using a, a system call. So we can see here the, uh, the, the summarization of those different values uh, printed to a log um, from the little Python script that's, that's running on the left there. And um, and so we can see here the, the particular statistics that we're keeping. So VFS reads and writes, TCP traffic. Um, and then we're going to start the uh, next, the SQL injection. Um, so we'll start the attack. 
And um, you won't see anything here. Um, this is just uh, uh, on the side. We'll, we'll be feeding it into the machine learning uh, algorithm to, um, to, to make the deduction about whether this is uh, good or bad, or if there's uh, abnorm anything abnormal going on. We'll switch that real quick. So here we see, again, the same dashboard um, from the, the query that we're just running. So this, this is something that can, you can update in real time. It's a very lightweight analysis that you do. So um, in conclusion, so we, we, try, we set out as, a, again, a research experiment to um, see what some of the components of a security as a service uh, as an infrastructure operator might be. And um, let's look at uh, the, the transparency as aspect, for instance. Um, the application um, was not invoked at all. We didn't um, instrument anything inside of MySQL or any of the OpenStack services. Um, this was just something we started running off to the side, um, didn't have to restart anything or recompile the kernel or load any kernel modules. This is using functionality that's already there in um, uh, recent kernels. Um, so eBPF is something that, that we rely on that lets you uh, kind of script inside the kernel, and we saw some of that in the code snippets earlier. Um, and so the, the developer is completely unaware of, of the fact that they're being monitored. Um, the, uh, the tools that we use um, rely on a, a GitHub repository that, um, that's under the, the iVisor umbrella um, that provides some of the, um, the tools and, and use cases um, so in terms of how generic this is, um, like we showed two different applications, two different types of microservices, one which is the um, OpenStack services composed of all the different uh, types of um, binaries that are running inside that, as well as a, a f something that was focused on MySQL. Um, but again, the, the tool didn't change. The tool was, was generic, was just looking at a generic set of um, kernel, uh, uh, kernel properties. Um, and uh, we have some future work um, to see, again, that the that, that scales to other types of um, attacks and is generic across those as well. So uh, trying to, to look for DNS uh, types of uh, attacks, which is kind of a, a re uh, relevant recently, um, things like ransomware. Um, so trying to see if the, the training set or the profile generation works for those types of use cases. Um, and again, the, the efficiency for this, um, it's very low overhead. Um, the, the probes that are running inside the kernel um, are, are pretty seamless. We're not dumping data from, um, from kernel into, into user space and, and looking at it later. It's something that you can, you can look at right inside the kernel, do the summarization. Um, it's not sampling based. Um, it's something that you can be completely accurate in all of the, the metrics that you're keeping. Um, so you're not going to, to throw away data or, or miss something. Um, and the, the, it's completely scriptable, so you can um, uh, decide from, from your application, from user space, how often you want to try to det detect the, the various anomalies. Um, but even while it's, you're, you're not pulling, the, the data is still being generated. So you're, again, not losing anything. Um, and the, the machine learning part is something that we do off box. So it's, you know, we can take these very, very lightweight um, summarizations, um, you know, probably just you know, a megabyte or, or something very small, um, which is also tunable, and ship it off. Get the, let the analysis run, maybe even across a cluster. You can um, do maybe a coarse grain analysis and do a, a heavyweight one later um, and you know, archive the data for you know, whatever future, um, future use case you might want to look for. Um, but that's all uh, invisible to the, the nodes where the, the initial analysis is running on. Um, and so here's like some, um, some analysis that we have on the, like the overhead of, or maybe the, the, uh, the scalability factors of some of the, the things that we're monitoring, um, where, for instance, the, um, the VFS read, it's a hash table that you keep um, binned based on the, the time and as well the number of processes that you're keeping track of. Um, so there's a finite amount of processes that you'll need in Linux, um, and this will, will scale to that number. Um, it's just a, you know, a, a compact hash table um, based on process ID. 
Um, and uh, that's the, um, the gist of the presentation. So um, if you're interested in uh, looking at the tools that we just showed, um, Ali has these uh, on his GitHub. Um, and we might uh, be moving that over to the iRevisor GitHub in the short future, um, and as well for all of the iRevisor tools uh, and the, the various mailing lists and so on, you can see the details up there. And with that, any questions? I'll go back to that slide in a second. Um, so any questions? Uh, I'll leave this up for people to look at, but uh, I have a microphone here, and feel free to I'll walk us around. So the question is, like, what kind of uh, Docker networking used in your test? Is it like weak pairs or yeah, this bridge or does it support OVS? Uh, this was, a, a, I think, a simple Linux bridge, but the, um, that's kind of tangential to the, the tool itself. That was, um, I mean, these these are these tools can be attached to generic VEs. They can um, uh, be used to monitor, I mean, kernel functions, irrespective of the network device type, it's, it's very flexible. Do you have a solution for when you're using kernel bypass uh, technology like DPDK and SRILV? Um, so within um, the, the set of tools that you can, or with the set of hooks that you get uh, with a BPF, you can, besides attaching to kernel functions, you can also attach to user space libraries, so you can use this as a, a user space library monitoring, um, just like as a, a crazy example. Um, on the performance monitoring side, someone built a, a memleak detector by uh, putting a probe in libc uh, at the, the malloc and free calls and was able to, to build a, a, mem a memory leak detector based on you know, doing, doing some analysis uh, within the BPF program. So it's, um, I don't know the details of the DPDK library itself, um, so I, wouldn't, I couldn't tell you what functions to instrument, but it is possible to instrument uh, most any function, that as long as it's, you know, it's in a, a, a library of some sort. In terms of networking, are there any limitations about the depth that you can get into the packets? You seem to be counting amount of traffic, but could you count like type of packets, which ports are going to, uh, any type of networking information of the traffic? Yeah, so you um, you could, for instance, build a, a packet par a simple packet parser, and um, you know include um, you know TCP packets, but not UDP packets, or try to figure out what the URL is that's being uh, requested, assuming it's not encrypted. Um, some of those assumptions are why we kind of choose to, to treat this as a black box and, and make it more generic. But um, if the, the data is there, you could build a, a, a parser for those things, with the caveat that the more work you do, you, I mean, you do have to pay for some of that in performance. Um, but it's, it's a very efficient library, so it can, it can accommodate those, those extra use cases, I think, pretty well. OK. So um, if you have any further questions, feel free to come up uh, if you want to ask in private. Otherwise, uh, thank you very much.